Jump into the unknown with the new KTM 890 Adventure R. Race. Hello Motor Rider World fans and welcome to this latest episode of Talking Moto GP where we take a look at the latest team that has just launched their 2023 Moto GP campaign. It is of course the Red Bull KTM factory racing team. I've just showed you the official launch video showing off their two riders for the season. Of course, South Africa's very own Brad Binder going for his fourth season in MotoGP with the team. And the latest addition coming over from the factory Ducati squad is of course Jack Miller reuniting his partnership with KTM. He had a successful time, remember, many moons ago in the Moto3 World Championship with the KTM brand, and he is back and looks very happy. Very hairy, but very happy to be back with the KTM brand. Um, the livery looks very similar to the last couple of years. Not much more they can do. It's kind of like Repsol. You're kind of stuck with that, that livery. So we're going to be seeing that for a long time. But there were a couple of new decals and logos on the bike and a couple missing that uh, I noticed and that was in the media debrief and a big shout out to KTM uh, dealing with the media team the press officers everyone is it's so easy they invite you to everything their media assets are brilliant the video assets the photo assets they really do give us um, media companies all the tools we need to put great videos like this together they give us great content and uh, really are accommodating when it comes to all the media debriefs chatting to the riders um, we got to speak to Guadotti and Pitbara as well so hats off to the KTM MotoGP press officer team there um, speaking to Pitbara I did mention that uh, the fact that there's no Motorex branding on the, the, the KTM MotoGP bike that's a first since they entered the championship this is the, of course their seventh season in the MotoGP World Championship can it be lucky number seven fingers crossed let's hope so yes I am a little bit KTM biased because Brad Binder's there but um, yeah I just I have to everyone has to appreciate the, the job that KTM's done it's been up and down left and right and and everything but they're sticking to their guns they're pouring just like Ducati they're pouring so many resources into motorcycle racing not just MotoGP uh, World MX Dakar you know all those championships and you know the thought of potentially KTM in the same year winning the Dakar which they've done already Moto3 which is you know hugely likely Moto2 which is a big possibility and MotoGP which could be a possibility now um, for the first time in their seven uh, years of being in the MotoGP championship that's just a huge pat on the back never mind AMA Supercross World uh, MX Enduro all those championships KTM throw a lot into it and that is why they are thriving not only on track but off track in production motorcycle sales and everything so a big pat on uh, the back to the whole of the KTM organization as with Ducati I think they're doing a great job and that's why those two brands are really just thriving in the motorcycle market at the moment but getting back to the Motorex branding but Barra said it's you know it, they've had a great relationship they still do have a great relationship with Motorex but the, the way that MotoGP is going with biodegradable fuels and 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 they really had to team up with a fueling partner and Mobile One was the best they like the fact that they're not teamed up with any other motorcycle racing team so it's a really good partnership there for them so thinking about the future and trying to build a relationship with a fueling company to help progress their whole project which is very clever indeed another partnership they've got is um 
Cupra, Cupra cars, love those Cupra cars. Uh, I managed to have one last year when I went to Mugello um, with my mate Richard Smith. That was our renter car and fantastic car, really is. And love the look and feel of them. So another partnership, new partnership there for the Red Bull factory KTM racing team. So as I said, I got to speak to... Um, Franco, uh, Francesco Guidotti, Padbara, Brad and Jack Miller in the media debriefs and speaking to Guidotti, um, speaking to all of them in fact, what I really really loved in seasons gone past it was all about you know we need to improve, we need to just you know make our bike a bit better to challenge and you know top five, top six would be great, top tens would be great. There was always, yeah, of course we want to go for the championship, but realistically there was no real talk of going for the championship because they knew they weren't there yet. I can feel this vibe from everyone that I spoke to, all four of those guys, that the championship is very, very much on the cards. Maybe not so much for Jack Miller, being his first season, he, he came out in that interview and said, listen, it takes two to three seasons to really adapt properly to a motorcycle. If you look at Maverick Vinales and some other riders, he said, he's, you know, it, it does take two, three seasons to adapt. So he wasn't really talking title. Of course, he said he would love to go out and win the title first time out for KTM. But he knows that there's some adjusting to do from himself as a rider, get adapting to the bike, his crew chief that's come over from Ducati as well. So there's a lot of adapting that needs to be on his, done on his side of the garage. But Guidotti was saying, you know, our next step now is winning that championship. We've got Brad Binder. We've made all the right signings. I think Guidotti has been such a vital signing for that KTM team. I think it's a brilliant signing. I spent a lot of time with the KTM team last year and got to meet uh, Francesco Guidotti and he is just a fantastic person, first of all, and a fantastic team manager. I can see the way he, he deals with not only the riders but the whole team. There's a lot of respect there um, and he, he really just lets everyone get on with their job and he, you know, he doesn't micromanage, which I think is a good thing and just lets the team get on, you know, gets in, gets stuck in where he needs to be but every time, you know, he saw me in the paddock, it was, hey, how are you? And very accommodating. And that's that whole KTM team. They really do have this, this great vibe about them. I really did feel a good vibe about them last year. They ended off uh, end of 2022 with a great result with Brad in second at Valencia. So again, everyone is just talking, right, the next step now is championship. Even speaking with, with Brad, he was like, it's my fourth season in MotoGP now. I think I've kind of done my, you know, my schooling. Um, I've learned a lot of things. I know, I know a lot more what I need to do and what we need out of the bike. He said there's still changes we need out of the bike. We need to find more rear grip. We need to find a little bit more turning on the front. But from what this new chassis that they brought out at Valencia last year, they found something. They really did find something. And Brad was even talking championship now. Um, of course, he's spoken championship in, in seasons gone by but again it was never with us a surety it was it was always like yeah we would like to go for the championship but now there's not much butt left there's this this there's this this confidence that they can really go for this championship and it's it's all around if you look at social media and MotoGP in general KTM uh, are getting a lot of praise. KTM are being tagged as a team that can potentially go and upset the apple cart this year. Even Pekka Banyaya came out and saying one of the big contenders for the title is Brad Binder. It's never been mentioned before that Brad Binder and KTM in the same kind of senses as going for the championship. They are now. So that's a really, really big positive there. Guidotti was also talking about Jack Miller and the move there. He was saying it was in many ways forced upon them. Um, they wanted to continue the relationship with Miguel Oliveira, but I think Miguel, and he's come out publicly and said it, Miguel needed a fresh challenge. Miguel needed the next step in his career. You know, he gave his heart and soul to the KTM project. They loved him there. He was part of the family, but, you know, he kind of felt like he was getting stuck in a rut. He needed that, you know, he needed that that new challenge, that 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 new start to kind of just boost his uh, his confidence and his desire and his and his motivation to go again. So, yeah, the Jack Miller move was forced on them, but they've again made probably one of the signings of the season in Jack Miller. Not only for what he can bring them on track with all that knowledge from Ducati, help them develop the bike, make it better, and 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 and, but also off track. He's a PR dream. He's a fan you know fans absolutely love him he's a great guy I also got to spend time with him last year and again I met him once or twice and every time he saw me in the paddock no matter if he was running late for a meeting or whatever it was always a you know a nod of the head and a how you doing and everything so fantastic fantastic guy and I really hope um, that Jack can hit the ground running 
I think he will. Uh, I think certainly in the sprint races, we know that Jack Miller is one of those guys that gets the best out of soft, soft tires. The KTM package has never been that good, certainly on a soft front tire. They've always had to rely on a, a harder carcass front tire. But I think Jack Miller in the sprint races could really do something in the, in the main races, the Sunday main races. I'm sure he'll uh, still have a lot uh, to learn from the KTM package. But yeah, it's a fantastic signing for KTM. It really, really is a fantastic signing. And the whole team are excited. Brad Binder's excited. He's really good mates with Jack Miller. They've got a great partnership and a great relationship as well. So I think that everything points in the right direction for that team. They've made the right signings. They've brought in a couple of Ducati mines just to uh, boost what they already have in-house. And Pitbara and Guadotti said that, you know, everyone's focusing on that. They've brought in these new Ducati mines and Jack Miller and his crew chief, NNN, but they forget the you know, the people that they've already got in that team and in that foundation. And they've built themselves up to this point now where it's time to talk about championship. So, you know, well done, KTM. They, they, they've never stopped trying. They keep pushing. They're spending the money. They, they're putting the resources out there. And this could be the season that it all pays off for them. Uh, Guidotti was also touching upon the sprint races. He says, that's going to be tough to manage. I did ask him, you know, from a team manager point of view, how do you manage the riders, the team? You know, how, how much do you commit for these sprint races? Because the main prize is Sunday race day. But, you know, there's there's something to gain on, on the Saturday. But there's something you, you can lose more than than what you would gain on a Saturday. If your rider goes and destroys the bike, your team are under pressure and hurt, the rider hurts himself and it puts Sunday in jeopardy. So he said it's going to be very hard. He said the riders, you know, have got to now change their training a little bit because there's this added race. There's 42 races this season. That's double the races. Okay, yes, the sprint race is only going to be 12 laps or whatever, and it's replacing FP4, uh, which they were doing laps but racing and FP4 are two different things. Brad also said that he, he he's fully in favor for the uh, sprint races. He said he would much rather do sprint races than FP4. Um, so he's excited for it, while some of the other riders aren't that excited. But Brad certainly looks very excited. <clears throat> he said, just like us fans say, you know, um, more races. What more could us as fans want? And him as a rider, he just wants to race more. Yes, he knows there's risks to it, but... He gets to race his motorbike more, which is which is fantastic. That's just the mindset of of Brad. And you must check out the other the the the, the full interviews that we've posted on our YouTube channel with Jack Miller, Brad Binder, Pit Byra, and the Guadotti interview will be going up soon as well. There's some great insight there, especially from Jack Miller talking in KTM colors for the first time, and and Brad, you know, still playing the game. You know, he knows how to answer questions and that, but. You can see there's this confidence in Brad now that, you know what, it's time to go for this championship. So very, very, very excited. Uh, chatting to Pit Byra again, um, loves Brad. He is just a Brad Binder nut. I'm pretty sure they've given Brad Binder keys to the office, all the passwords to the bank accounts uh, at KTM. They just love him so much because he has. He's committed everything to that project and he still is. A couple of questions were asked, you know, okay, Brad, if, you know, if KTM don't bring you the package this season, will it be time to look uh, at other teams and that? And Brad's just, I'm happy with my team. I'm committed to this team. They've looked after me. I want to become world champion with KTM. So they are a committed family, a committed partnership. Brad always talks highly about his team and his, and his relationship with his team. And I've seen it first and that team is unbreakable. They really have got a great bond. And that is what plays in the favor of Brad Binder and KTM again going this year. It's, I, I can't help but get excited about talking about uh, Brad Binder and KTM in the championship. Um, we have I heard all this hype and that uh, you know, surrounding KTM before. They finished seasons off well before and we think, right, next season it's going to be on it. So it's it's hard to get fully excited because there's always that little bit of doubt. But I don't know. It, it just looks like they're so much more prepared than they've ever been before. Um, the bike looks much better. You can see the changes in like rake angle in, in a couple of areas on the bike. They've got that long, horrible um, pipe on, on the back. But it seems to be working, you know. Uh, for function over form type thing. If if it gets the job done, which it looks like, uh, delivers smoother, less aggressive power, so the riders are able to get the power down a bit more. It, I'm sure, helps in certain circumstances with engine braking. So yeah, it doesn't look the greatest, but if it works and it brings them a world title, hey, I'm all for it. Um, but Barra was saying, you know, it's 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 awesome that they get all these compliments and how they're one of the best teams in the paddock, the most professional. But now it's time that they back that up 
with winning more races and winning championships. So again, Pitt Barra, Guadotti, Brad Binder talking championship. We won championship. This is our year for championships. So that's that's a real, real positive there. And like I said, be grateful KTM if they could potentially win the MotoGP World Championship, Dakar, Moto3, Moto2, and all the other dirty championships around the world in, in the same year. That'll just be, that'll be massive. That'll be absolutely massive for KTM. Um, speaking to Brad, he said this is the best chance yet that he's, that he's ever going to have or had so far of, of winning the championship. He feels like he's, he's got the package now. They've still got some tweaking to do. He says, we still have to find more rear grip, especially under braking. We need the rear to, to grip a bit more. We need the bike just to turn in. Uh, you know, it's a little bit, still a little bit stubborn turning in and getting it onto the apex. That's something I saw standing trackside last year. His braking is so good. He carries at corner speed, but he just couldn't bring it in. And it's, it's millimeters, you know, we're not talking meters, we're talking millimeters. But in MotoGP, you know, a millimeter is 0 0.001 of a second. Round a track with 15, 16 corners over 30 laps, it adds up and that's that, you know, 0.2 of a second, half a second that they're missing sometimes at, at races where they're just not quite competing. But we did see a lot uh, better results last year. Certainly Qatar, the season started off brilliantly, ended off brilliantly at Valencia and there were some great rides in between. Aragon was a good ride for Brad, Miguel winning in the rain. So a lot of positives again there for Brad. This is his ninth season with the uh, Red Bull factory KTM racing team. It's his fourth in the MotoGP. He finished sixth in the World Championship again now. So he, he's, he's really put his name in the hat there. A lot of riders, a lot of media, a lot of top people around the world are, are now looking at Brad Binder and, and speaking championship and talking championship. One question that was asked to Brad was, how do you feel about being now considered one of the best riders in MotoGP? And he said, it's a huge compliment and I appreciate it, but until I win the championship, it, it doesn't mean anything to me. And that's just the determination and, 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 the, and the fire that's in Brad Binder. So yeah, it all just gets us excited. It really does get us excited. Um, chatting to Jack Miller, he just said it's, it's going to be an adjustment for him. He, he's lo he, he loves being back with the brand. He's been back to um, the, the, the head office in Matokofen. He's met all the team there and he just says it feels like he's back home in many ways. He's got his crew chief with him, so that's a little bit of familiarity with him, but he knows they've got a lot of work to do. He said his first impressions, the question I asked him about his first impressions of the KTM from the test, and you know, uh, he would have heard horror stories about how this bike doesn't handle and and how did he find it? And he said he actually found it really good. He was really surprised um, at how good the package was. He just needs more time on it, you know. He said he likes the Valencia test because he's fresh off the Ducati, climbs on the KTM, so you have that direct comparison, comparison within a day or two of each other. But he said he felt a lot of positives. He really, really did. So he's excited for the challenge. He's excited to work with Brad and the whole KTM team. But he says, you know, that we've got to we've got to just hone in the expectations a bit because it does in MotoGP now, it's so ruthless. It can take two to three seasons to really get up to scratch with a new package. So Jack Miller's excited, looks good, looks nice and hairy, happily married. Uh, that's what happens when you're happily married. You just let the beard grow. You, <laughs> you know, you don't have to impress that much anymore. But no, he looks comfortable. He just looks happy. I think he's, you know, he said last year with the caddy, he never felt fully comfortable because he was always on that one-year contract so he always felt like his job was on the line ktm to a contract he's got it in the bag i think he's going to give him this cell this year to develop and get the best results he can possibly but 2024 is the year that jack miller is really going to give it a good go so excited for this 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 new ktm team all signs are pointing to positive things another great positive is danny pedrosa put barra and guardotti announced that Danny Pedrosa will be entering a wild card race at Jerez. Now, why is this big news? This is big news because it's a huge confident boost. Pitt Barra and Guadotti said every time we spoke to Danny Pedrosa about wild cards after his last wild card appearance, which was a couple of years ago at Red Bull Ring, he just said, no, no, I'm done. No more wild cards. No, no, no. It's too risky. I'm old. I don't want to. Um, and I think it was more because the package wasn't there. So for Danny Pedrosa to come out and say, cool, pencil me in for a wild card at Jerez, means, and Pitt Barra said it, that our package is really good. He's confident that the package can be competitive for him to now dust off his, his race suit and say, right, I'm going to come back and race. So another big positive for KTM, and it'll be great to see the, the little samurai back in the World Championship for that wild card at a race. And there could be more. They didn't, they didn't, throw, they didn't rule out um, a couple of other wild cards, not only for Danny Pedrosa, but their new uh, test rider as well, which is Jonas Folger, who will be joining the test team. They, of course, will be out at the Shakedown test on the 5th of February at Sepang, and then the 
the 10th of February is the full first MotoGP Sepang test. So cannot wait for that. Exciting times at KTM, exciting times in MotoGP. Uh, so that's Monster Energy Yamaha that we've launched. That's Factory Ducati that we've launched. Uh, Grassini Ducati. Uh, Pramac Ducati and now the Red Bull Factory KTM team. So we still have a lot of teams to get through. Uh, the new RNF Aprilia team, the Factory Aprilia team, Repsol Honda, LCR Honda. There's still a lot to get through and I'm so, so, so excited. Throw those gardening tools away, burn them because not long now, ladies and gentlemen, before we don't have to do the gardening on Sundays. We don't have to go to kids' parties. We don't have to do anything. We finally have that excuse of, sorry, my angel, it's MotoGP race Sunday. Give me the remote and leave me be. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, ride safe, subscribe, like, share, follow, spread the word of Motorrider World. Goodbye.